Are, are we doing an intro or anything like that? Um... This is the disgruntled crab and rusty culture most professional Christmas review show. For those of you that have been following along with this journey as we do holiday specials, this is our third one for this month of December. We're reviewing the cartoon The Tick Loves Santa. Now, I would imagine a lot of people in between our ages and below would not even know what this show is because I had a very, very, very vague memory of this show. So uh, do you want to just give a quick explanation of what it is? I would absolutely do that because unfortunately it's one of those shows that they just kind of didn't do anything with it. There's there's a bunch of really good 90s shows, in my opinion, that just kind of fell off. They haven't released them. It's hard to find like actual physical copies of these. I believe they were only released on DVD. Um, and it was released on Hulu, I think, like a month ago. But it is just a basically a DVD transfer. So it's not touched up at all. It's really grainy. It's four by three. So unfortunately, there's a lot of shows from the 90s that are lost to time. And this one is a parody of your standard superhero comics and cartoons, where the main hero is kind of the comic relief of the show. He's almost naive in everything he does, always out for justice. So everybody else in the world is basically your standard superheroes even though there's really odd situations in the show where the tick is almost childlike in his reactions to everything in the show and we're doing full spoilers right yep this is full spoilers is if you haven't watched the show yet it was out in 92 it's available on hulu all the episodes so again this episode is the tick loves santa yeah, you just type it into YouTube. It's first one. That's how I found it. Yes, it's also available on YouTube because the rights no nobody was doing with anything. So there's a lot of episodes out there because nobody was actually holding on to the the trademark or the copyright. So there's a lot of episodes that are just floating around because nobody cared about them. Now to address just to address it, there was a reboot of this show, right? There has been like a live action one. Yeah, there's been actually two. Uh, live actions there was one in the early 2000s i believe or late 90s early 2000s and then there was an amazon one as well is that any good did you see it at all i have not seen any of the either have i any of the live action because uh, unfortunately i'm kind of locked into the cartoon so i watched the original live action and unfortunately it was early days of superhero stuff so they weren't really able to do stuff Patrick Warburton played the tick and he was locked into a muscle suit so he couldn't really move that much. So it was very, it was more of a sitcom type of thing than actual superhero show. Hmm. All right. Well, I think I want you to go first on this one. Okay. I'm going to have a hard time because I thoroughly enjoy this show. It, it was, it's got a special place from when I was in middle school. I watched every episode when it came out, I recorded every episode, so I had it on VHS. I know most people are like, VHS, what's that? But I thoroughly enjoy the show entirely. And this is one of a few episodes that I could watch over and over again. Because I just, it's such a great concept. There's so many great little things of humor locked into the show. And it just, it's a great episode, uh, especially it's got, it's got Santa in it and it, it's actually plays with the idea because a lot of cartoons, they didn't want to toy with the idea. So 
the the other heroes don't believe in Santa, and it comes out that actually Santa's real, and he gives them tips on how to stop the villain of the episode. Look, Tick, I, I didn't want to have to bring this up, but Santa Claus isn't um actually. Okay, what I mean is, frankly, he doesn't, uh... Tig, get with it. There is no Santa Claus. I know. You got fried. Tick, that's not what we're saying. No, this is something different. Bigger. Okay, there is not now, nor was there ever, a Santa Claus. Wait a minute, you. I've heard about people like you. Are you saying... You don't believe in Santa Claus? Oh, please. Oh, uh, definitely not. not. No yeah, Santa definitely Claus. not. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yes. <clears throat> and you call yourselves superheroes. Well, I can see we won't be settling this over eggnog. Oh, 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 oh. Can I have a cookie? Oh, uh, okay. Jake, Arthur, how's it going? Here, a travel alarm clock for you, and for you, an in-the-egg egg scrambler. Enjoy. Jake, let's talk. <laughs> See, Joe, he's real. Come on, Jake, up you go. Yeah, and I'm coming at this one with the perspective of I did not regularly watch the show. I mean, it was out before I was born, <laughs> but... um. I, I just remember bits and pieces of it. I remember when you first suggested this as an idea for something for us to take a look at. I was like, I have this vague memory of a dude in a blue suit. And I don't know where that memory's from. I don't know where I saw it. Then when I watched the show, I was like, oh, this is where this memory was from. Definitely. And I I hate to say, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as you did. Oh. <laughs> and, I didn't hate it. Let me be clear with that. I also don't think I disliked it. I just didn't love it. And and that's, I, I was just very middle of the road with it. I don't know if it's that the humor is just not my kind of humor or what it is. Cause he is, he's very naive. He's very childish. I don't know if is the right word because he is, he, he's still a hero and he's still doing heroic things, but he, he, there's definitely that naivete to him. And I don't know. It just, it didn't gel with me. I did like the idea for the episode, which is this idea of just this guy is a bunch of different Santas and he's running around trashing Christmas, basically. And I thought that was all fun. So I guess, yeah, for me, I, sit, I would give it a solid, a solid probably B minus is where I would sit on it. It's, I look back on it. I just love the concept of the tick, the main hero of the show. He can't fight the villain because he doesn't know it, it, it could possibly be Santa. And that, that's one of my favorite lines in the episode. Is uh, you know, it's probably not Santa, but how do you know? <laughs> and the other hero is like, well, here's a clue. If he jumps up and kicks you in the stomach, he's probably not Santa. So, tick. That was interesting strategy last night. You know... <laughs> The one where you just, oh, stood there in the middle of the fight and did absolutely nothing while the rest of us got creamed? I have to admit, you really dropped the ball there, Tick. Yeah, definitely a lot of ball dropping. Guys, I'm sorry, but I... I just couldn't... I couldn't hit that jolly face. I, I mean, okay, odds are it wasn't the real Santa. But how can you ever be sure? Here's a clue. If he jumps up and kicks you in the stomach, it's probably not Santa. And there are funny moments. Like again, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I, I, I had, I enjoyed watching it. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Looking the, at it, it's probably. I would probably guess that a lot of the characters were established in previous episodes, so there's no real introduction of all of these characters. I think the only one you might have a clue on is four legged man because he's got four legs and it's written right on his chest. <laughs> and yeah, that's definitely probably part of it was I was, you know, I had this very vague idea of what the show is from very distant memories. But I'm for the most part was going in blind. So 
I, I look at it. Unfortunately, I have extreme rose colored tinted glasses. So I am going to have a hard time separating myself from what I remember when I, when I was a kid watching the episodes. And I don't know, it just, it clicked with me. It might be, again, it might be because this is deep in the first or second season. So there's a lot of stuff that isn't introduced with characters. They're just, you're supposed to know the characters. How did the show work? Was the show more of a, were were the episodes pretty self-contained? I know when we talked about a Batman, one of the things we talked about Batman, the animated series is that the episodes were fairly self-contained and this had elements of that other than I didn't really get to know the characters, but I guess thinking back on Batman, I didn't get to know the character either in that. It's just that I already had pre-established the knowledge of the character. And that was kind of the pilot episode. So there was some names were dropped just to give you an idea of these characters. This, most of the episodes, it was actually an episodic cartoon. The only thing is the villains would have some grand master plan. And if they change the world, it would stay that way through all of the episodes. There, there's one spot where Santa is flying past the moon, and you might have noticed that there's a big chunk of the moon missing, and there's a big H and A carved into the moon. Right. And that's just a running joke they had. There's several episodes that lead into the moon being the way it is. And it's just kind of a nod all the way through that, hey, the moon is always going to look messed up because of different things that happened through the show. So is the is the character super-powered? That was something I was trying to figure out. Yes, he is nigh invulnerable and super strong. Okay. And his partner, what's his partner's name? His partner's is... name is Arthur. Arthur, okay. And is Arthur super-powered? Uh, no, he has a wingsuit. So okay. he's a moth. He's not a oh, bunny. I thought he was a rabbit. He's not a bunny. He's a moth. <laughs> That's a running joke in the show, is that a lot of people call him a bunny rabbit. That's why he was <laughs> flying around with his with his wings. And is there an origin to the name The Tick? Uh, I believe it was just that he is a, a tick, because he's got the little antenna. And don't get me wrong, it, it, it was fun. It was fun. You're not going to waste your time watching it, even if you share the same opinion of me. It, it was it was fun to watch. It's just I don't know if it's something that I would I would sink into. Yeah, unfortunately, you probably have to start from the beginning because there's a lot of the, the earlier episodes set up some of the characters. It's an odd show with just creative villains. So that's kind of the the interesting thing is like each villain is extremely odd there's there was one lady that in the show was trying to bring about the ottoman empire because she's can control furniture <laughs> so it, it's just an eclectic type of show and it's got and an I, odd sense of humor and it definitely seems like there's a lot of love behind it and i gotta say like the voice acting in it is pretty dang good everyone was was in it you know it didn't feel like anyone was phoning it in especially the two main characters the tick and who i now know is arthur the moth <laughs> um they're 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 in it and you know sometimes you see with these these animated shows where it just doesn't feel like they're always there they're 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 just phoning it in or you only have your main characters who are there i i didn't feel that at all with this it felt like everyone was having fun that was the kind of the nice thing about the show is everybody had an established character I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there was the one guy that he said definitely a lot and that probably don't know that reference at all. Nope. It was kind of a reference to Rain Man, a Dustin Hoffman movie. I've seen Rain Man. That was kind of the, actually the nice thing about the show, even looking back at all the characters, because there, there are certain episodes where each character gets a chance to shine. And that character is known as Sewer Urchin. And everybody gives him a hard time all the time because he's just this he's just this guy that supposedly goes into the sewers, but he's 
barely able to do anything on the surface. And there's an entire episode where the Tick and Arthur have to help him in the sewers. And once you go down into the sewers, he is like well-spoken and just an amazing hero once you get down into the sewers. Again. So are the, are the Tick and Arthur always the main characters? For the most part, there are certain episodes where other characters will kind of be the main focus. But the Tick is the title character, so I don't believe there's any episodes that don't have him in it. But there are several episodes where Tick and Arthur almost have a falling out as, as you're going through it. So there's a little dynamic going there. Looking at the Christmas episode, it's it's just, I really enjoy it just because of the odd concept of it. You have the main hero. He just, he can't actually help out in any of the battles, even when he knows it's not Santa. He's met Santa. This isn't Santa, but he can't actually hit that jolly face. You, get the horse, little fellas. Save Christmas! Arthur! Static electricity shorts them out! Their Achilles heel is the Noogie! Great, great! Help! Season's greetings! <laughs> that was fun. And, you know, maybe I'm being too hard on it. Maybe I just had a bad day. But, uh, but I don't know. It's just... It didn't grab me, and that's all really I can say is it didn't grab me because I agree with all the stuff you're saying, and I kind of wish it did grab me more. Whereas I think back to Batman, and it's weird to compare the two, but that one grabbed me. It they are two different beasts as you're going through them. You can tell there was a little more budget put to Batman, uh, and there was just a a difference in animation style. They actually tried a lot of new stuff with Batman where the tick is kind of your standard animation. They did have, as I was watching it, there was, again, a lot of effort put into it where it's not just your standard characters, that one character standing there and their mouth is moving and maybe their arms move. It's like they all, they're all well animated and have a lot of emotion in all of their performance. So kudos to the animators because that's a lot of effort they have to put in. Absolutely. They all feel alive. There is some recycled stuff because that's on animation, especially when you had to draw everything. You had to do some of that just to save yourself time and actually put stuff out for the actual, the highest points of the show. So there, there's certain spots you'd want to have the action really sell and so you'd have to skimp on some of the other areas. Yeah, one of the things I do like, just to focus on things I, I did like, is how comically bigger the tick is than everybody. Because <laughs> I'm just looking at screenshots now, and he's just, even when he's next to all the other heroes, he is so much bigger than all of them. And I think that's got to be a play on on superheroes of the time, right? How they were just these massive hulking figures. Because that kind of seems what he is, like he's a satire. Yeah, he is. It, it's kind of a parody of a lot of the the episodes. Uh, a lot of the episodes are, are parodies, kind of, of the standard superhero. A lot of, sometimes they'll poke actual fun at the superhero genre. It looks like there's a Batman. Is there this, is. Is there a Batman spoof guy in there? He is. He's known as Deflator Mouse, which is German for field mouse. And he is an extreme coward in the entire show. <laughs> There's one spot where the tick gives the mayor a, basically a tick symbol to throw up in the, in the sky. And the mayor's like, well, we don't really do those. I mean, we got one from deflator mouse. And anytime we shine it in the sky, he turned off his phone and disappeared for a week. <laughs> I really liked the, the, the villain in this show, just because looking at it, He's kind of got an interesting power that he, that he stumbles across where he's able to duplicate himself anytime he gets electrically shocked. 
And there's a running gag with the security guards that they're always at the spot where he is robbing it. So they lose their job right. to find another job. Yeah, I didn't understand that at first. I, I I thought that that was just a power he had. It took me a minute to realize that it was when he got shocked was when it happened. And that shocking them again was how to get rid of them at the end. Or yes. like the static electricity was kind of funny. I liked that. And it was something that made sense, too. It's like, you know, if shocking them brought them in, and if shocking brought them into this world, then shocking can take them out. And it was a way for the tick to still stay within character and able to defeat the enemy because he he still wasn't able to hit Santa. What'd you think of Santa's little secret service? That was funny. (laughs) It reminded me of the Santa Claus, the Tim Allen movie where he has the little. Yep. I think um, this came out before that. I imagine it probably did, but I just remembered Santa's little secret service in that movie as well. That's funny. I like when stuff does stuff like that, when they play around with the Santa myth. That's always fun. Yeah, so I have a little bit of rose-colored glasses looking at the show, unfortunately. I can't can't separate myself from that because it was just such a such a part of my childhood. And it's I still enjoy it in a mood. I could turn one of them on and actually just watch one. And in fact, when I was looking through Hulu, the little screenshot that came up reminded me of an episode. And I was like, oh, man, I want to watch that episode just because of that little thing that's in there. Yeah, I think that's all I got. Unless you got anything else. I I think that's where we can end it. Um, We will be releasing... A bunch of Christmas episodes, or Christmas specials. Christmas is the greatest. It's Even fantastic. though some of the stuff we're going to watch is not, <laughs> Christmas is. Join us again. I believe the next one that will be on the list will be the Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> we love you. See you then. <laughs> That felt so cringy. Leave leave that in. For sure. <laughs> you know, Arthur, this strange Christmas episode has taught us much. Now we know that Santa is real. He's a compulsive gift giver. And he's Christmas all over. We, like his wondrous reindeer, should carry his message forward. So shove that bit in your mouth, shake your mossy antlers, and strike your hooves against the sky! Or just wake up and open your presents. I mean, what the hey? It's Christmas! Arthur, Arthur, my my dancing sugar plums, they're back! I know, (laughs) mine too, and they're the best. Merry Christmas, Tick. And Merry Christmas to you, Arthur. Merry Christmas!